Hey, this is Danny Wilson. We're back with another episode of Hot Bike Tech Tips. Today we're gonna to talk about parts that fail when you start building a lot of power. It's not hard to get a lot of power out of the Milwaukee 8, so when you start building power and riding them hard, there's things downstream that are gonna to start to fail. One of the most common things to fail is the compensator. We're gonna be installing a Baker compensator today. The way that these parts work, this is a factory compensator. This binds onto the output shaft of the engine, slips into here, you've got gears inside and out, just splines. The basic function of this part is to absorb shock that the engine generates on rapid acceleration and deceleration. As you do that, this cams and it allows all of that shock to get absorbed rather than transferred down into the clutch basket, which is the next thing that takes the abuse. In a stock situation, you've got these bell springs that stack opposing each other. This is what applies pressure to it. This is all splined onto the engine and torqued down. Typically what fails with these when they do is this piece will break. It'll shatter in the low spots, generally leaving you three broken pieces, at which time you cannot transfer the power from the engine to the transmission. So if that happens, you're stuck wherever it breaks. The Baker compensator works very much the same. It's just designed a little bit better and it's designed for more abuse. So instead of all these loose bell springs, you've got one built spring pack, similar design where it splines onto the output shaft of the engine. But as you can see, this is a much more stout component. These don't break. We install a lot of these here because we do a lot of high output builds and I have yet to have one of these fail. So that's what we're gonna be putting in this bike today because it is going to get a turbo. We're also gonna be replacing the clutch. This is an Evolution Industries clutch. They are available for cable and hydraulic. It's a completely built clutch assembly. There's a lot of clutches on the market you can use. There's a lot of different plates you can buy. The nice thing about these is that they're ready to go. You don't have to cannibalize the ring gear. You don't have to buy separate components. The stock clutches will do good up to about 100 horsepower um, with the stock springs and the stock basket and all that stuff. What generally fails when you start making a lot of power is the splines inside the clutch hub itself fail because they're cast and they, they get spun by the main shaft, which is harder. This has a much harder not cast spline section. And it's also got different spring rates, so you can add or subtract spring tension to meet the horsepower output that you're making. So what happens when you run a high tension clutch with a lot of spring pressure, this stock plastic piece on the Harley clutch cables tends to strip because it's not designed to take that much spring tension. We use this part made by Fat Baggers. It replaces the plastic piece and gives you a fully adjustable, more traditional style clutch. But because it's made out of metal, it's not gonna strip and you're not gonna lose your clutch adjustment. We typically also replace the ball and ramp assembly with a Mueller because again, you're increasing the, the spring tension, you're increasing the clutch effort. This has different geometry in the ball and ramp setup, which gets you back actually to a little less than stock clutch lever effort. So we generally do all this together so you don't have any issues. recap just to where we're at now primary covers off you have to remove the foot peg and bracket I personally remove the kickstand because it's just two bolts and makes your life way easier you don't have to work around the kickstand so here we have the stock compensator assembly primary chain stock clutch this is your adjuster inside the clutch basket and this is your primary chain tensioner primary chain tensioner has a sprung shoe with teeth like a ratchet that keeps it from retracting, but as the chain stretches, it can extract and raise pressure. To remove that, there's a pin here and a pin here. That is intended for you to be able to reset this to zero. You can save yourself a whole bunch of drama by taking a zip tie, running a zip tie over that. It's gonna keep the tension the same. So when you go back together, you can just put the thing up in there, put a little bit of pressure on it, put the bolts back in. We're gonna start by removing the primary chain tensioner, then we're gonna remove the compensator and we're gonna remove the clutch assembly. Okay, so we got the tensioner off. We had to remove 
the adjuster in the basket, which once you unload it, you have to have snap ring pliers to get the snap ring out, which will then expose the clutch hub nut. At this point, you're going to need some special tools. The clutch hub nut is a 30 millimeter socket, which most people don't have. And the compensator bolt is a 70 Torx, which most people definitely don't have. So if you do intend to do this job yourself, you're going to have to get those tools. The clutch hub nut is reverse thread. So we've got the outer portion of the compensator off. Now I've got all the other individual components that need to be removed. The only thing that we're going to be reusing in here is the primary chain. And it's important to keep that chain oriented in the same direction. So when you go back together, it travels in the same direction. You don't want to reverse the travel of the chain. When they're new, it doesn't matter. But if it's got miles on it, you want to get it run in the same direction it came off in. All right, now we're getting ready to put things back together. So when you get this new clutch, the plates need to be soaked in the fluid that you're going to be running, which in this case, we're using automatic transmission fluid. So these springs come out. Depending on your power output, there are lighter springs than what gets shipped. For what we got going on, these are going to be fine. This clutch takes six springs. You can also mix and match. You can do every other spring a different tension to get the correct amount of pressure you need on the clutch. The top plate comes off. This has your adjuster in it. I'm gonna turn this clutch over and get all the plates out of it and soak them. So we've got these soaking. This needs to take place for about 10 minutes. If you let them sit in there for about 10 minutes, you can start putting the basket and the chain and the comp on. By the time you're done with that, you can uh, start building the clutch back together. All right, so the clutch plate's been marinating for about 10 minutes. We have our clutch hub and basket here. We have our compensator here. We're gonna start putting this together. For the compensator, we're gonna put this as an assembly, so we've got this spline piece with this spline piece and the spring pack. We're going to put this on the engine first. Once you get the splines lined up, you just slide it on and seat it. So we're going to get our chain, which is the only item that we're reusing out of this compartment. And put our compensator in there. Flip that over the clutch basket. This is all going to go on as an assembly, just like it came off with the stock components. Get the splines lined up. Get that started. Slip that on. Now we're ready to put the fasteners in it and torque everything. Uh, we're going to start building the clutch, and we've got our plates. We're going to use this fluid in the primary when we're done. So this was a clean pan when we started. We're going to position it under the clutch so that as we build it, and it drips down, drips back into the pan. Primary's all put together, everything's good. Cover's back on, new gasket. We're gonna throw the fluid in it now. But we're gonna leave the derby cover off. 
because we're gonna be doing the Mueller easy pull next and we're gonna need to adjust it. So now we've got this finalized with fluid. We gotta put the kickstand back on, the shift arm and the foot controls. But before I do that, I'm gonna pull the drain plug on the transmission because we're gonna to have to take the side cover off on the other side, so we gotta drain the fluid. We'll let that drain while we're finishing this up. We've got this stock component out of there. It's a pretty simple system. This is how it works. You've got three ball bearings sitting in a pocket. When the clutch is engaged, this is at rest like that, which is allowing full pressure to be applied to the clutch pack itself. When you clutch, those balls rise up on the ramp. And that is what pushes the clutch out to disengage it so that you can shift gears or find neutral. What's happening here to make this reduced effort is the ball, and we use the same ball bearings, but the ramp that's cut into the Mueller is at a much different angle, which makes it an easier clutch effort. With the two components side by side, you can tell how different the angle is. And that's where you get the reduced effort from is the angle in that pocket. So a little tech tip here when you're putting these together, those balls can shift out of place and get in a high spot and the clutch won't work. And you're gonna be moving stuff around. So what I do is I take some axle grease, I pack it down in the pocket, put the ball bearing in. The ball bearing can't fall out when you do it that way. So you're not gonna have to take the bike back apart again when you find out that the ball got stuck in the wrong spot. All right, so now we're gonna go back together with this. We're gonna put the Mueller bottom piece in there. That tongue locks in that groove. We're gonna take the stock, hook and transfer it over. This grabs onto the clutch cable. Clock at 180 out, and it drops in. At that point, we're gonna install our snap ring. When you install this, you want these two tongues to not be in a gap. So you wanna make sure that the two tongues are sitting in material, not in a gap. Some of these smaller gaskets, specifically this side cover gasket, don't wanna sit for you on the pins. So if you take some all thread or cut the head off of a bolt, you can throw those in and put your gasket on. It'll stay in place for you while you're putting the cover back on. Primary is done, the easy pull ball and ramp is installed, pipes back on. Now we're gonna install the last piece of this little puzzle here, which is the metal adjuster from Fat Baggers. So this bike already had handlebars put on it at one point, so it's got an extension in it. If this was a stock setup, this would also be yellow plastic, this billet piece right here. Um, the install on this is a little bit different. You're gonna pull this lock out. Basically just gonna get a pair of uh, dikes and cut all this plastic off and get this spring out of the way. So this is what you're going to be left with after you cut all of that off. And again, if you had a totally stock clutch, this would be the the OEM yellow plastic bottom piece. So because this one's got an extension in it, we had to separate them. Um, we've got everything lined up here, got the O-ring off of it. This is just gonna slip over. Then your O-ring is gonna get installed and put back on there. So 
So now that we're back to essentially a traditional clutch cable that's adjustable, we're gonna run this down until it lightly seats. Actuate that clutch a couple times, make sure it is. Service manual says a half to a full turn. I generally set them at just a touch over a half and then lock the nut down. So now we've got that adjustment finalized. We're gonna adjust the cable here, take the slap out of the clutch lever here. So when you get this adjusted out, when we're finished, we're gonna lock it down. When your adjustment's correct, if you squeeze the clutch lever, let it go and pull the cable, you should have about the thickness of a nickel between the perch and the collar. So we're all finished up, gonna go test ride the bike. We basically bulletproofed the primary on this. So we've got a Baker drivetrain compensator in it, Evolution Industries clutch. We're running the stock chain adjuster. We put a fat baggers metal clutch cable adjuster and a Mueller easy pull clutch in it. So this thing now, nothing's gonna break in there. It'll take all the power that we're getting ready to throw down with the turbo. If you have any questions on anything that didn't get covered today as it relates to this install, hit us up. You can DM Hot Bike or you can DM me at MotorWitch.